Hi. In this tutorial, we're going to continue where we left off in creating our electronics control box. And we're going to start off by making a couple changes to our cut extrude. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select the hole that we made. And what you want to do is dial back the diameter dimension to be five millimeters and be sure to have it 11 millimeters from the end point of the line coming up to where the circle is. Let me show this. And that's going to be our uh, set of dimensions for this hole. So I'm going to now jump to the next part that we want to create. We want to create a door that uses these two holes in order to hinge and there's going to be a rod that passes through these two holes and through the door and that's going to allow it to swing open and close. So I'm going to come up here and save and I'm going to jump to my other part. And so the first thing that we're going to do in this part is we're going to create a base flange which, should, which we should be uh, fairly familiar with by now. And so I'm gonna, when I uh, edit this sketch, really it should be 258.34 by 416. And it should be made with a center rectangle, which I'm sure we're used to by now as well. It's placed on the origin. And once you have that created, the next step we wanna do is we wanna create three flanges. So come up here to edge flange. And we want to select three edges, like I mentioned. So we're going to select that edge. And I'm going to set this dimension to be 12 millimeters. I want it to come up. You can see that in the preview. And so this is going to be my second one. And I'm going to select one more here. And so those are the three. I'm going to set it in this direction. Again, I'm supposed to be 12 millimeters. And the dimension is going to be from the outer virtual sharp. That's the reference point that I want to dimension from. As I mentioned before in the other video, if you choose inner virtual sharp or if you choose tangent bend, it's going to dimension it either the straight part for inner virtual sharp or it's going to come all the way to um, the the tangent to the curve of the bend for the third option, but we're going to stick with the first option and the flange position is going to be material inside so that it's easier for us to dimension later. So this is going to be 90 degrees and you should see uh, your bend radius one millimeter and your gap distance to be one millimeter. Um, you can turn off use default radius if you need to. Uh, since this is a very simple part, uh, we're not going to mess with the global settings. You can just change that here for now. So I'm going to hit OK. And so this has created the flanges. And from here, um, I'm going to edit the sketch of one of the flanges. And so as we learned in the previous video, behind every edge flange up here, there is a sketch that, that can be edited. So I can come here to this sketch and edit the sketch. And I can drag out a circle and place it here. And I can set a dimension on this circle to be a diameter of five millimeters. And I want this to be in the, in the middle of these two lines. So I can just click on this uh, midpoint of this line and when I drag it out horizontally, anything that sits on this point is going to be in the, in the middle as well. So come here and hit merge, clicking on the center of the circle and, and this point. And I can set a smart dimension here for five millimeters from the end and hit OK. And we're going to exit. And because of the fact that that was a closed profile inside of the box, it has um, already updated with the hole. And so I want to do this on one of the other sketches as well. Same deal. So I'm going to come over here, do the same thing. I'm going to start with the center line this time. 
put it on the middle, drag it out. Let's pull out a circle, put it on the center of the circle. Smart dimension for the diameter, five millimeters. And dimension for the line is also gonna be five millimeters. Uh, you could go a little faster by just clicking on this dimension. That'll set it to five. And hit OK. And you're gonna hopefully see it update uh, just the way it's supposed to, which it has. Uh, that's, what, that's what we should expect. So I'm gonna save it. And I'm gonna come back to my features uh, because I want to create a fillet on this line and on this line as well. And I want this to be five millimeters. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay. And so we can actually check out uh, something that we haven't seen yet and that we haven't done. Um, I can go to my flat pattern, which is here at the bottom. It's always at the bottom of the part. Let me delete this old uh, feature. And with your flat pattern, you can see that it's grayed out. But once you click on the plus sign, you can activate it and you can right click and hit unsuppress. And when you unsuppress, you're going to see your flat pattern show up. So this is a flat pattern of the part. And if I come back here and I suppress it, then it's going to close back up. So that that's a, a great way to kind of check out the part that you made, see what the flat pattern looks like, see if it's, if it's really manufacturable and if it unfolds the way it should. Um, one more thing that we're going to go over before we uh, finish up with this is I'm going to show you here in the cut list. If I click on the plus sign here, you can right click here on sheet one and hit properties and that's going to bring up your cut list properties and there's a, a wealth of information here. Uh, things like bounding box length, bounding box width, so that's the bounding box of your flat pattern, um, or of, I'm sorry, of your part. Um, you also have your uh, sheet metal thickness, your, your area of the bounding box. There's um, a cutting length, uh, cutouts, bends, material mass, a, a lot of information here that you can check out really on the fly. Um, and that, that can be very helpful. Uh, so I'm gonna exit out of this. And so that's our part. Now that we've created our housing and our door, we want to create an assembly of the two parts, including the rod that connects them. And so what we're going to do is come up to Insert Components. And I'm going to click on Metal Box. And I'm going to hit OK. And so if you notice, I didn't drag the metal box outside of the um, feature manager tree here. I just clicked OK and that placed it directly on the origin. So here's the origin. Um, these are the three planes that make up the origin of the assembly. You can see that the box is directly on there. Uh, that's just going to help us uh, better solidify the location of our first part. So now I'm going to go back to insert components and I'm going to click on door, except this time I'm going to drag it outside of the feature manager tree. So now that it's outside, I'm just gonna click once to place it. And I'm gonna come up here to move component and click on the arrow to hit rotate. And now I can rotate my door and I'm gonna hit okay. And from here, I'm gonna click on mate and I'm going to click on concentric on this hole and I'm going to click on concentric on this hole. And this uh, handy little uh, shortcut menu is going to come up and I'm going to hit OK. And from here, all I have to do is make this face coincident to this face and they're going to snap together. So I'm going to come up here and hit OK for that. And so with this finished, I can exit come back to insert components and I can drag out my rod. And so I didn't do any tutorial for this part. I think this is a little bit too straightforward to really need to cover. It's really just one extrusion that's um, a little over or a little under five millimeters that
completely depends on uh, the way that you want the door to feel. If you want it to be tight, obviously you're going to make it larger than uh, the size. If you if you want it to fit well, then you're going to make it smaller. Obviously, if it's larger than five millimeters, it's a press fit, and the ends would have to be tapered. But um, just for this simple example, I made it five millimeters, so I'm going to click to place it. And I'm also going to make this part. So I'm going to come over here, hit concentric, click on the circle. And I'm going to come over here. And if I look through the part here, I can click on uh, one of these circles. At this point, it really doesn't matter which one. But for best practice, I'm going to choose my base part, the box, to use as my concentric mate. So I'm going to click on this hole here. And when I hit OK, you're going to see that the rod can now move in and out as we would expect it to. And I'm going to set one more constraint so that it doesn't move around anymore. I'm going to come over here, click on this face, and I'm also going to click on this inside face. I'm going to come back up to mate, and you're going to see that it automatically set coincident as the standard mate. So I'm going to hit OK. And as we can see, uh, we now have a door on our assembly, which can move in and out. And we have a rod that connects it. And uh, the whole thing uh, works for the most part. There's, there's even a stop um, where the door cannot uh, move any further. So uh, let me show you what that looks like. If we come up here to our uh, view manager, I can come and turn off sketches. And that's just going to show it a little bit better. And I can come over here to my display style and I can click on hidden lines visible. And when you click on that, you're going to be able to see right through all of the parts. And so you can see that when I drag the door down, it shuts with a little bit of room on both sides. And I can also bring it up. I could bring it up to about here where there's interference. So that's a really handy and easy way to see where your door is going to collide with your initial control box.